What's up guys and welcome, you are watching Fazer Fitness. So let's start this video with the physique update of Nathan Diesha posted by his coach Stefan. So the prep has finally started for Nathan and this is the year where Nathan will bring a much bigger version and a much better version to the stage. And the reason I'm saying that is because last year he was coming back after a couple of bicep injuries. But this time it was a very well planned off season. He has been extremely focused since last year and he really had a good run with his current coach. He added two more pro wins to his resume in 2023. But most importantly, he managed to stay very disciplined throughout this offseason. He was pushing almost 300 pounds at the peak point of his offseason and he was much leaner and holding a very good offseason body composition than his previous looks. And I have to say when Nathan Diesha is on, he is a very difficult bodybuilder to beat. His muscle bellies from the front and from the side, they are world class. The chest and the shoulders are on a different level. The kind of muscle maturity and the quality that he has, only a handful of pros have that kind of quality. But all that being said, ever since he turned pro, there was one very glaring weakness in his physique. And that is his lower half from the backside. Specifically the hamstrings, they are not up to the par. And realistically speaking, do not expect any drastic improvements in that area at this point of his career. That is just genetics. So as per one of the interviews that Nathan did last year, he has given himself just two more years. Two more fully dedicated years to bodybuilding before he officially hangs up the posing trunks, before he says goodbye to competitive bodybuilding. And before that, he wants to win 20 pro shows. So he needs another 9 pro wins before he officially retires. That is the goal. But is that possible in 2 years? I have to say that is highly unlikely. So Nathan Diesha did a total of 5 shows last year. And he only won 2. But I think all of us can agree he should have won Europa Pro Spain as well. So he should have won 3 shows last year. But it is what it is. And Nathan Diesha has been pushing really hard in the offseason as well. We just saw him yesterday doing that 200 pounds dumbbell press. So he is putting his 100% into this prep. So hopefully Nathan is gonna do Dubai Pro in July. And that is probably gonna be his first show of the year. And if he can peak exactly the way he did for Flex Pro Italy, with a little more size, he is gonna be really dangerous. We do not realize how much muscle Quentin Beast would actually put on from 2022 to 2024 until you get to see this picture side by side. This comparison of his most muscular shot. That is absolutely insane. He's not only looking a lot more bigger, but is looking a lot more leaner as well in the latest update. But still, he is not announcing what show he's gonna do next, when he's gonna compete in 2024. Although him and his coach Matt Jensen, they have decided when they're gonna compete, but they're just not announcing it yet. And whenever Quentin decides to announce the show, there is gonna be quite some buzz over it on the bodybuilding media. So this is a very special athlete. And he's blessed with one of the best genetics in the modern times. Probably the best genetics in open bodybuilding. He just needed more time to fill out his frame. To be more bigger, more muscular and have more density in his physique. But at this point, it seems like he's finally there. He has finally filled out his frame at least to a certain point that he can be very competitive in the men's open bodybuilding. Taking more than one and a half years off, that was certainly a very tough decision. But when the athlete and his coach plans it right, like Quentin did, it really pays off as we can see right here. So what show do you guys think Quentin is gonna do for 2024 to get his Olympia qualification? So Toronto Pro is happening in June and that seems like a great option as he's gonna be proudly represent his country there. Toronto Pro is gonna be in his hometown. So that show is still about two months away and Quentin really is in a great condition right now. His carbs are low and cardio is high. So that is plenty of time to get stage ready, to get peeled inside out. And that is something we already know about Quentin. He knows how to get shredded to the bone. He knows how to bring that insane level of conditioning. So this, I believe, is gonna be such an impactful year for Quentin in the men's open bodybuilding. And do let me know what you guys think. Can Quentin crack top 10 at his Olympia debut? Or can he place even higher than top 10? Please do let me know in the comments below. One of the biggest legends of bodybuilding, the four times Mr. Olympia champion Jay Cutler meets Subil Mosquera, aka Nexilla, the man with the biggest legs in the modern bodybuilding, or in the history of bodybuilding for that matter. So the stars of bodybuilding have arrived in Germany for FIBO Expo, and I'm sure we're gonna get to see some very cool moments from this bodybuilding event. So Jay Cutler's legs are obviously downsized. I mean, the guy retired more than a decade ago, but still just take a look at the separation in his quads. 
That is just nuts. And that is 11 years post retirement. That is how good Jay Cutler's legs were. So the last time we saw him on the Olympia stage was back in 2013. And Jay Cutler was able to place top 6 at that show. So Jay Cutler lost the Olympia title to Phil Heath in 2011. And he did not compete in 2012. He actually came back in 2013. Which by the way was the lowest placing for Jay Cutler. Since 2000 when Jay Cutler placed 8th. So the way Jay Cutler showed up in 2001. And he was able to beat Ronnie Coleman during the pre-judging. That was the most wild thing that happened in the bodybuilding that year. So when we talk about the greatest quartz in bodybuilding, the Cutler is always mentioned. That legendary quartz run that we saw from him in 2009. That was one of the most iconic moments in the history of bodybuilding. One of the best moments ever in the bodybuilding history. And Jay Cutler has a very unique record that no other guy in the men's open bodybuilding has. He is the only man in the history of bodybuilding who was able to win back his Olympia title after losing it the previous year. Yes, the GOAT Arnold Schwarzenegger also came back after 5 years in 1980 and he won the sendow again. But he never actually lost the title. And now with Hadi Chopin, who is also in his prime form, he can be only the second man after Jay Cutler to win back his Mr. Olympia title after losing it the previous year. But do let me know what you guys think is that something Hadi Chopin can accomplish. Another two months of solid off-season phase before Hunter Labrada officially starts his prep for the first show of 2024 and that too from this point and he is looking really damn good right now. And I have to say Hunter's conditioning has been so good while achieving the heaviest off-season weight. He is already the heaviest he has ever been and he's gonna push more for two more months. But with that conditioning that he is in right now, he can be easily ready for Chicago Pro and Tampa Pro 2024. So he has won both these shows in the past and they are scheduled roughly 12 weeks before the Olympia 2024. So that is ample amount of time for Hunter to cruise into the Olympia. So the expectations are set pretty high for Hunter LeBron this year. Not just by himself but by the bodybuilding community as well. Because everyone has been so impressed with how Hunter has been looking in this offseason. And this time his own mindset is very different. Now training has been top notch. No missing of any kind of meals and most importantly. His digestion this time is finally in the right place. And that is gonna be the biggest factor in Hunter's final look, especially how his midsection looks in 2024. Now, as great as he looked at Tampa Pro last year, he was facing some digestion issues even then. And maybe that is why he wasn't able to present his best package at the Olympia and at Texas Pro as well, where he was facing that breathing issue. And he wasn't controlling his midsection as good as Andrew Jack was. And that was one of the reasons why Hunter Labrada lost the title. If you guys remember that video by Tyler Mannion, he explained that was one of the reasons why Hunter Labrada lost that show. So Hunter Labrada landed in the solid 6th place last year. But he has placed high before. He has placed top 4 at the Olympia in 2021. So everything seems to be clicking so well for him this time. And I for one cannot wait to see his final look. But before that, keep in mind, we are gonna get to see him guest pose at that Pittsburgh Pro. With the likes of Derek, Nick Walker, Big Rami and Samson Dauda as well. Andrew Jack is also doing this guest posing for the very first time. And with the way Hunter has been looking lately, I think he's gonna stand out there as well. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.